now I got a question because you got to help center me morally. And you give me a little historical perspective. I asked Brother Barbara this. So I saw something beautiful these last few weeks, especially these last two weeks. So we had the vile evil of Brother Floyd. Then you know what I saw that was beautiful? People marching, being shot at, beat, gassed, and they didn't stop. They didn't stop. I thought that was beautiful. Lord, Lord, yes, that is beautiful. Anytime you see human beings straightening their backs up and willing to walk together, struggle together, sing together, fight together, or whatever color, there is a moral majesty and a spiritual beauty in that that cannot be denied. There's no doubt about it. It's just that we got to get ready for the neo-fascist clampdown and the white backlash. That's all. That's what's coming, man. How do we get people ready for that? Because I literally wrote that today in my new essay at Salon. I said, Trump, because he's a fiend, and never underestimate him and William Barr. He's going to use this with the other neo-fascists to criminalize dissent. He's already doing it with Antifa, saying they're terrorists. He's coming for everybody. I want people to be ready because the empire always strikes back. Oh, in a sense, especially when it's weakened in desperation. Absolutely. And you got both individual desperation with the neo-fascist gangster in the White House. But then you got the whole system that's feeling as if it cannot reform. It knows it cannot reform, but sees escalating demands being made on it that it cannot meet. And so you either got a backlash, which is what Trump represents, or you get neoliberal milquetoast folks putting on kente cloth and acting like somehow they've been on the cutting edge of the struggle for justice. You say, wait, 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 though. Y'all, we were born at night, but not last night. Wait, wait, what's going on, man? What is happening here? Good God, have y'all been in power all this time, and these brothers and sisters, black brothers and sisters, been getting shot year in and year out all this time? And it's hardly been a mumbling word. You help criminalize the police department. You push through the crime bill. And now all of a sudden you put on Kente cloth and go down on one knee. And we're supposed to think you Martin Luther King Jr.'s second cousin. Tricky. So you see the decadence and the decay in this, this sad thing, though, man, because there's so many people suffering. But we, we can't fall for the okie doke. We can't be seduced by the cheap performance at all because when you actually look at that funeral brother real closely as you did and you see the black folk suffering but still resilient not one word of hatred not one word of revenge you know there was a very powerful symbolic moment when they burned that police station now they just didn't burn that police station out of happenstance. We are learning more and more about the police thuggery and brutality in Minneapolis, these police that were involved in killing Brother Floyd. But I was watching that police station burn. You know what I thought? I thought about Saddam's statue being torn down. And I said, now with that action of the people's uprising, now it cognitively in our popular imagination, now people know that's possible. Just like they now know it's possible to march against those rubber bullets and that gas. And once people realize that, Lord, what comes next? And that's why the elite are terrified. That's exactly right. That's why you reach the point where they're willing to bring out the military and the military to turn on not just American citizens, but we talking about white brothers and sisters, kids. See, when they brought out the military in L.A., it was a black thing for the most part. It really was. So they say, okay, they bring out the military on me, you, and Jamal as a teacher in a minute. Ain't no problem. And they start bringing it out on these white brothers and sisters, a lot of middle class and educated and so forth. And they say, okay, y'all siding with these black folk. You on that side. This is the military. All righty. Now, of course, I mean, what I talked about was the military is 40% black and brown, right? I called for a wave of defiance and disobedience within the military and say, okay, so you all going to turn on your grandmamas and granddaddies and mothers and fathers and cousins because the military is not inhabited by the upper middle class kids. It's working class. Now, if they had an inkling that there was going to be a wave of defiance and disobedience within the military, we're not going to do it. That would have been a wonderful moment, man, because then all of a sudden the elite say, God, all of our greed, all of our contempt for these folk, we can't even rely on our military. You see, that's right. So I'm very worried, though, about liberals and progressives and others, because some folks got short memories. They go from one thing to the next. 
celebrating the military and saying, look, because literally what we saw last week, if that was another country, they would have said it was almost a coup where the military tells the president no. And I'm worried about liberals and progressives saying, oh, the military now, they're going to save us. It's going to be good if Trump refuses to leave. Because do you see what Biden said today? Biden said that if Trump refuses to leave, the military will remove him. Now, he won't say that unless they told him that. He's already got the answer. True, that's true. I hear what you're saying. That's a very important point. Very important point. But you see, it's one 